In pre-season testing, there was plenty of talk about how quick the Mercedes car for 2019 was, with most people predicting that Mercedes had a worse car compared to Ferrari, and were expecting Ferrari to be on top at the first Grand Prix in Melbourne. But of course, that did not happen, and it was in fact the team from Brackley who ran away with that weekend, and they showed just how strong they really were. But the reason this was such a surprise is because Mercedes in pre-season testing played a lot of mind games. And were definitely not showing everything that they did have. And that's why in today's video I'm going to analyse why Mercedes are the masters of mind games and also manipulation. And look at just how they played everyone. Now we've had about a week to digest what happened at the first Grand Prix in Melbourne. And still for me, it was a surprise as to how quick the Mercedes car was, even though I thought they were going to be good there anyway. I don't think anyone could have predicted they would have been that quick out of the blocks and would have been on the front row by three quarters of a second. I don't think actually many people saw this result coming. But the reason people did not see this result coming is because Mercedes made out they were worse than they actually were. And they did that with some very smart comments during the off-season and also during testing. Let's go back to the end of 2018 and about a week after the final race had happened. Mercedes of course ended the season in style by winning in Abu Dhabi and also locking out the front row at that Grand Prix. But Toto Wolff immediately was coming out with quotes suggesting that the 2019 car was not looking that good. As he came out and said in an interview that the power unit for 2019 in terms of development was actually behind its schedule. Making people think that maybe this team will really slip back for 2019. But after the first race of course it has become clear that they are absolutely fine when it comes to power. As they had no reliability issues in Melbourne and seemed to have the most power. Meanwhile Ferrari had to turn their power unit down because of cooling issues. Honda had a good weekend but they still aren't as good as Mercedes when it comes to the power units and Renault for me are still dead last. So clearly this was rubbish. But then they came out with another quote as testing was about to begin and this quote actually came out on the day the new Mercedes car for 2019 was revealed where Toto Wolff came out and said that everyone could win the title in 2019 and they were looking at everyone as a rival. Well, after watching the first Grand Prix in Melbourne, it has become pretty clear that the top three teams are still miles ahead. And it would be a miracle if a midfield team in 2019 actually gets a podium. Because pace-wise, they are nowhere near Mercedes, Ferrari or Red Bull. So again, clearly, this is false. But then after an interesting pre-season for the team came the best quote of them all. And it was from Lewis Hamilton on the final day of testing in Barcelona. Where he came out and said that the Ferrari car was potentially half a second quicker than their car. And of course plenty of people in the media, I think you know who I'm talking about, ran with this quote. Now I'm sure as I've mentioned millions of times, I actually went to all four days of the second test. And from what I saw, the Ferrari to me looked to be the better car. But it was not half a second faster for me, it was about a quarter of a second faster at most. So I knew at the time that Lewis Hamilton was not telling the full truth as to how quick his car really was. And I also think after testing you'd struggle to find someone who did not think that Ferrari did not have the best car after testing. As their car at the circuit to Catalonia did look very very good. But then of course once we got to Melbourne, all of that was rubbish. As not only did Mercedes get pole position and also the race win, again they had a 1-2 in qualifying and a 1-2 in the Grand Prix. And were also on pole position by 3 quarters of a second. And there's no way Ferrari from Barcelona testing to the first Grand Prix lost 1.2 seconds. There is absolutely no way. We do know that Melbourne for Ferrari is not the absolute best track for them, but they did not lose 1.2 seconds in two weeks. And I think it has become pretty clear that Mercedes for basically all of pre-season testing, except for probably the final day, were sandbagging. 
But not only were they sandbagging, they were sandbagging a lot compared to the other teams. Because you do have to remember in testing, all the teams are sandbagging and not going as quick as they actually can. But of course we know now that Mercedes were of course sandbagging a lot more compared to a team like Ferrari. And they are now as a team a lot faster than people actually thought. And now this team going into the Grand Prix coming up have maybe different expectations compared to what they had during testing. And that's why for me this team are the masters of mind games because they played everyone. They played everyone into thinking they were actually slower than Ferrari going into the first race. And then at the first race, once you actually have to turn it up and absolutely go for it, they smashed Ferrari to bits. And because they did that, you cannot doubt they played everyone with what they said in the media. And also with their words, they made sure to manipulate the media into thinking a certain way so they could go into the first Grand Prix not having massive amount of pressure on them. Because in testing, if they came out and said that we definitely are going to have the best car for the first Grand Prix, they would have had a lot more pressure going into Melbourne. But if you come out saying that you're half a second slower than Ferrari, you do have less pressure. Because as I've said before, it's better to lose when you're expected to lose than it is to lose when you are expected to win. And that is exactly why Mercedes and Ferrari will do this in the media and play mind games and also not show their true pace. Because again, it's better to lose if you're expected to lose than lose when you're expected to win. So for me, Mercedes right now do have a mental advantage over especially Ferrari, who definitely after the first Grand Prix will be a bit concerned even though the next race in Bahrain this weekend should suit the Ferrari car, as Bahrain in the past has been a great track for that team. But there is one thing I have noticed when it comes to these two teams, when it comes to tracks that either suit them very well or not at all. Let's start off with Ferrari. Now, Ferrari, for example, whenever they come to a track where it suits their car to a T, Ferrari do tend to have the fastest car, but they don't make it that easy for themselves when it comes to getting the race win. Think of the Hungarian Grand Prix in 2017, where they definitely did have the best car. But because of an issue with Vettel steering, he had to hold up Raikkonen and his teammate, and then Raikkonen had to hold up Bottas and Hamilton. And they only just about pulled off a 1-2 finish when they really were supposed to. And then you have other races like Spa in 2018 where Ferrari definitely did have the best car that weekend. But made it pretty hard for themselves as Sebastian Vettel only qualified in P2. And had to make sure he passed Lewis Hamilton at the start to basically win that Grand Prix. When to be honest with the car they did have, they should have been getting pole quite comfortably and winning the race in a more comfortable fashion. And for me, those two examples do point to how Ferrari can struggle to win at tracks where they're expected to. There are, of course, races where Ferrari were not expected to win, and they did, for example, Melbourne in 2017 and 2018. Even though, of course, in 2018, they did get lucky. And then you have other races such as the 2017 Brazilian Grand Prix, where, again, they were not expected to win. But again, if you do look at Ferrari as of late in, say, the last couple of years, when they come to a track where they are expected to do well, they don't exactly dominate the weekend in a fashion that they should. But then if you compare that to Mercedes, whenever Mercedes get to a track where they definitely do have the best car, they absolutely dominate that weekend. For example, think of races like Russia in 2018, where they definitely did have the best car. And except for Hamilton passing Vettel in the Grand Prix, they dominated. And then you have the races at Suzuka in 2017 and also 2018. Where again, when Mercedes had the best car, they ran away with that race weekend. But also when it comes to winning at tracks where they're not supposed to, Mercedes actually make this quite a habit. Think of Singapore in 2017. Where they had the third best car and they won the Grand Prix still. And then there's other examples such as Hockenheim in 2018 where Mercedes again did not have the best car. But ended up with a 1-2 finish and Lewis Hamilton won the Grand Prix from, I believe, 15th on the grid. If I am wrong with the grid position, make sure to correct me in the comments. But I think you kind of see the point I'm trying to make. Because Mercedes are a lot mentally stronger and have a mental advantage over Ferrari... When it comes to tracks where Mercedes are expected to dominate, they do it in fashion. 
And also when it comes to circuits where Mercedes are not expected to do well, they do better than they were expected to. Meanwhile for Ferrari, whenever they go to a track where they're expected to do well, it's not exactly the most dominant weekend you'll ever see. And when they're not expected to do well at a certain track, they really do not do well at all. And that guys is all about mental strength. If Ferrari were a lot stronger mentally, they'd be able to pick off the races they were expected to win a lot better. And also perform better at tracks where they're not expected to actually do that well. But I think the last month and a half has shown that Ferrari compared to Mercedes are still a bit weak. And are absolutely going to have to respond in Bahrain where Ferrari are expected to do well. But will they actually produce the result that is expected? I'm going to be honest, I don't have that much trust in Ferrari. I think in qualifying in Bahrain, they're going to be very quick. Because Ferrari in qualifying tend to be a lot better than they are in the races. But on race day, I just don't think Ferrari will have the speed or the mental strength to get the win. Even if they do have the best car, I don't think that will actually get them the win. Because as I just showed, Ferrari are not exactly great at dominating tracks where they should dominate. And I don't think this team yet has really shown that it does have the mental capability to dominate a weekend. When again in Bahrain considering the track characteristics and the way their car works, they really should dominate this track. But with the way they are mentally, I just don't think they're going to. And in fact, for me, an early prediction for the Bahrain Grand Prix is for Mercedes to win the Grand Prix. And I think it will be Valtteri Bottas who takes the victory because Bottas is very good in Bahrain and also Mercedes I don't think will be that bad. Remember in 2018, Bottas was only one lap away from winning the Grand Prix. And you cannot doubt that Ferrari did have the best car last year in Bahrain. And because Mercedes surprised us so much in Melbourne with their pace, I think Bottas will take the victory in Bahrain just like he did in Melbourne. But when it comes to the mental side of this battle for the World Championship and the mental battle going into Bahrain, Ferrari absolutely have to respond in a similar way to how Mercedes responded to Ferrari's great pace in testing. Ferrari have to show that they have the best car in Bahrain and they do have to get the result to show for that. Because if they don't, then it's going to be quite a long season, I think. Because if Ferrari don't do well at a track which historically is very good for them, then I'm not quite sure for Ferrari 2019 is going to be the season where they actually win the championship. So it is absolutely vital that Ferrari responds this weekend. Because if they don't, you know exactly who are going to pick up the pieces.